Welcome, 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 welcome to International. Welcome, Wrestling. welcome. Hi. Hi, go ahead. I'm right here. I don't know what happened. Amen. Well, welcome this morning, amen. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in to International Christian Fellowship. We love you. We thank you for tuning in this morning. God got a word for you, amen. Somebody said, get ready for the blessing, amen. Get ready, amen, to activate the blessing this morning, amen. We got to come into the knowledge of who God has called us to be and what he has called us to have, amen. So tune in, get your family, get your coffee, and don't forget your Bible, amen. amen. Don't forget your Bible, amen. And we just want to praise and thank God for all of you who have tuned in this morning. Amen. Know that the blessings of the Lord is upon your house, upon your job, upon the works of your hands, and everything that you go to touch. Amen. Pastor Kimberly, welcome the guest and our family. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? It is a beautiful Sunday. Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. And we are grateful to be here this morning, and I'm sure you're grateful as well. Praise the Lord. This is the day. Come on, somebody, Amen. that the Lord Amen. has made, and let us, as the people of God, rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's give God a great big hand praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are truly grateful. We thank God for each and every one of you this morning. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Because the word, the word, the word is coming forth like never before. Hallelujah. It's taking us to different places in our lives. Yes. Hallelujah. So you all get ready. Say it again, Pastor. Get, get ready. ready. Get, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead right on into prayer. And we don't want to hold you up and the word don't want to be held up either. Oh, Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you all could bow your heads um, yes. and let us reverence our great and our mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he truly is worthy yes, to Lord, be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we yes, thank you Lord. this morning. Father God, we Lord. praise you this morning. Father God, we lift up your holy name this morning, oh God. We adore you this morning, Lord. We magnify you this morning, oh God. And because you and you alone are worthy to be praised, Lord God. We humbly bow our hearts before you this morning. And Lord, we surrender all that we have unto your spirit, oh God. And as always, Father, we invite your holy presence in this place, oh God. Lord God, we ask that you send peace, oh God, peace all across this nation, oh God. And Father, we thank you this morning, oh God. Oh Father, we thank you and we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you teach us, Lord God, to love Father as you love, oh God. For the new commandment that you have given, oh God, is for us to love even as you have loved, oh God. Lord, so I'm going to lift up our president of the United States of America this morning, oh God. And I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, to touch him this morning, oh God. Touch his family this morning like never before, Lord God. Send your healing virtue all the way to Washington, D.C. this morning, Lord God. That they may have, Lord God, that they may receive your healing, oh God. Lord, for all those in the White House that may have been affected, Lord God, this morning, Lord God, we ask that you send your healing virtue, Lord God. And Lord God, we as your people, Lord God, we repent, Lord God, and we turn from our wicked ways, oh God. And with true humility this morning, oh God, seeking your face, oh God. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you heal our land, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And now, Father, I lift up Pastor Rita to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, and I ask, Lord God, that you anoint her afresh, oh God, this morning, Lord God, as she comes, Lord God, and as she brings this word this morning. Give her a word, Lord God, that will change the hearts of your people, oh God, Lord God, that will 
take them to a new level in you, oh God, this morning. And that will cause, oh hallelujah, change, Lord God, in their lives, Lord God. Miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord God, fall in this place, Lord God. Fall all across the internet, oh God. And we, as the people of God, shall forever give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In the mighty, majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Come on, let's give God a hand praise all across this. All across the airways. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do this morning, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for you're worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Mm, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy. Glory to God.
the speech. Y'all know I was praying, praying in the spirit for my father, amen. Got him back in the bed, and I'm just, you know, uh, just going a little faster with the story. But when I got him back in the bed, he was all clean, had on his nice clean gown, and, you know, the baby done um, um, shaved him up, right? So I go to leave, and I'm saying, bye, daddy, bye, daddy. And he didn't say nothing. So I got outside the door, and I don't know, some of you who uh, have children play peep out with your, with your kids, and it's like peek a -boo? Well, I played peep out with my father. So I was in the hallway, and I would dip around, and I would say, bye, daddy, and I would get back out, and then I would get back in, and I kept doing it, right? And my father looked at me, and he said, God bless you, baby. And when he said that, Tears rolled down my eyes because I want you to hear this. My father blessed me. Did y'all hear what I just said? Amen. My father blessed me. So I want to say to you today that your father has blessed you. Amen? Amen. And he has blessed you and he has empowered you to prosper. Amen? Hallelujah. He, he, has, he has made ways out of no ways just for you. He has caused people to have preferential treatment when it comes to you. Amen. And so when my father blessed me, I'm going to tell you, tears rolled down my eyes. I went in there and I kissed him and kissed him. And he didn't even say nothing else after that. But all he said was, God bless you, baby. And my God, from that day on, I said, I am blessed because my Father blessed me. So today I want you to understand and I want you to, to take this confession with you that you are blessed because your Father has blessed you. Go ahead and say, I'm blessed because my Father has blessed me. Amen? So we're going to go in the Bible and we're going to come out of Ezekiel 44 and 30. Amen? And I'm going to put my eyes on them because I'm working with a different instrument this morning. My iPad wasn't acting right, so guess what? I pulled out the laptop. Amen? The devil is a liar. Don't want the word to get out. But you know what? God always make a way. Amen? And it says in Ezekiel 44 and 30, and this is my text scripture, and it says, in the, And the first of all the first fruits of all things and every ob oblation, of all, and I want you to know that that word uh, oblation means offering. Okay, so I'm going to bag up so you can put that word offering in there so it'll make sense to you. Amen? I'm doing the teacher thing. Amen? So hang in there with me. And it says, and the first of all the first fruits of all things and every offering of all, of every sort of your offering shall be the priest. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in your house. Amen? Somebody say, come on, say it with me. The blessing rests in my house. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's go back over and let's talk about this again. Amen? What is the blessing? What is the blessing? The blessing is God's creative power. He, which enables you to prosper and excel to the highest level in all that you do and in whatever you put your hands to. It is the reason for everything. Amen? And I, I, I want to say this. I want to say this. I was going back and I was thinking, and I want y'all to hold on to this. And I, I was thinking about the life of Joseph and the life of David. Y'all listen to me. Both of these men were honored by their fathers and they were about their father's business. And the blessing was on their lives. Even when, when David went into war, uh, he, he won every battle, amen? He was prosperous in everything that he did. Even when his son Absalom was coming up against him, he could never touch him. Amen? Because the blessing was on his life. We look at Joseph. Joseph was loved by his father. He, his father had him at an old age, and so he, 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 he treasured Joseph. And so Joseph was thrown in the well by his brothers. Come on, listen to me. But even the well, come on, couldn't hold him. Amen? They sold him as a slave, and he went up into Egypt, amen? And when he walked into Egypt, he was, he was preferred. He was, he was favored, amen? And God gave him supernatural wisdom to prosper. 
suffer because the blessing was on him. So it didn't matter where Joseph was. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It didn't matter whether he was in the well. It didn't matter if he, he was sold off as a slave. The blessing was still on his life. He still prospered. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Amen? But he was still very prosperous. And God made sure that no matter how, no matter what it looked like, that the blessing still, listen, rest, rested on Joseph. Amen? So I just wanted to say that when it comes to that. Amen? Joseph wound up taking over all of Egypt. Now, you've got to think about this now. He was just a little, uh, a little young boy, but he ran all of Egypt. How did he run all of Egypt? He didn't go to college. Supernatural wisdom of God. Somebody said the blessing. Amen? So for those of you who are out there listening, uh, listening to my voice, you can expect, because the blessing is on your life, you can expect. Amen? That when you go on certain jobs and you're going to do certain endeavors in your life, that even if you don't know, you can expect God to download supernatural wisdom in your life, amen, to help you out in some areas, amen, that you prosper in it, amen? Come on, somebody. So, in Genesis 1 and 1, can y'all go there? Go there for me. Genesis 1 and 1, and we all know this, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. Amen? Right? We are the exact replica of the image of God. Somebody say that. And I believe that we have such a hard time really knowing and understanding down deep without wavering from it because of the attack of the enemy on the mind. Listen, the accuser of the brother. But I want to let you know that every born again believer, excuse me, that is under the sound of my voice, amen, you are in the exact replica of God Almighty right now. Can somebody say it? You've got to get that down in you because then you'll understand the blessing as I go on. Amen? Hallelujah. But you are an exact replica of his image in the earth, meaning your born-again spirit is the exact image of God of heaven and earth. Take a minute, just for a minute, and think about it. Now listen, when you got saved, we already know the hands were the same, you wore the same size dress, your shoes were the same, but it was something that happened supernaturally in your spirit that caused you to be back in the image of God before the first Adam failed. Because the second Adam put you back in the image of God. Hang in there for a minute. There you go. You get what I'm saying? So when we look at ourselves, don't put ourselves down according to what the world standards is. Hang in there. Let's keep reading. <laughs> go to Genesis 1 and 26. Listen to this, y'all. Genesis 1 and 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. And our exact duplicated image. He says, let's make man in our image after our likeness and let them have what? Dominion. Meaning to rule, to reign, and to have complete authority. I want you to stop right there. Oh my goodness, every time I go here, because this is when, when God began to create everything, amen, man in the earth, when he was giving instructions and putting things together, amen, it was Jesus that put us back into Genesis chapter 1. When we, when, we were, when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, and we were born again, recreated in the image of God, it takes us, you've got to find your identity in Genesis chapter 1, amen? Oh my God, I'm going to run around here, y'all. Give me a second. Did you hear what I just said? Listen to this. And it said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them rule. Come on, somebody. We got to start ruling. We got to reign and, have com and, and operate in complete authority. And then it says here, Over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So we got authority, listen to this, over every creep. <laughs> it's time we see ourselves, amen, and walk in what God and how God sees us by faith, amen. And that is walking in the blessing. Somebody say, I'm walking in the blessing. 
listen, you know what, I'm, you know, Pastor Kimberly and myself, we in the house right now. And so I'm just going to go ahead and say, because see, I don't got all, I, I, I don't got all out the box now. The blessing is on this house. Amen. And because the blessing is on this house, I speak and declare that it's paid off. Amen. Mm -hmm. That we debt free. See, you, you get what I'm saying? Because we got to remember that what we speak and we know that we have authority. Amen. Come on, somebody. And we can call those things that are not as though they were. Amen. I ain't worried about no bill. I just said it was paid off. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. So it's time that we see ourselves and, and walk as God sees us by faith. Amen. God blessed man back in the garden of Eden. Remember I said we got to take go back into the book of Genesis. Before the law when God first formed man. Amen. We got to go back and look at ourselves and, how, and what God made available for man. Now let's go. It says this. This garden of Eden lifestyle. It says in 28. Go down to Genesis 1 and 28. Now listen, y'all ready? And God blessed them. Who did he bless? Them, that means two. God blessed Adam. And God blessed Eve. Amen? And God said unto them, be. Now remember, we had one over that word be before a couple of weeks ago, was it? I think it was a couple of weeks ago, but let's go back over that again. So when you hear God say, be something, you know what he's saying, amen? Be means to become. Be means to exist. It means to happen. So God said unto them, be fruitful. He didn't say, one day you're going to be fruitful. He said, be it, meaning come into existence now. He said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have what dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You see what the blessing is? It's that rule, that dominion, that authority. Amen. To be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish. Amen. It's all part of the blessing. So the blessing is God's favor. Amen. Come on. His wisdom, his prosperity. His preferential treatment, vindication, and protection on your life. It is God breathing in your direction. Amen? Come on, somebody. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this, and, and, and I put it in here, um, that that protection on our lives, that vindication, amen, because we are the blessed ones. Somebody say, I'm the blessed one. And so when the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, it's because you are the blessed one. Amen? That a, that a, thousand, a, 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 a thousand may come at your, when the, uh, one thousand may come at your side and ten thousand at your other, but they will come nigh unto you. Amen? That's because of the blessing that is on your life. Somebody say, the blessing, you got to get it. You got to get it. The blessing, Amen? Hallelujah. So why, why do we need the blessing in our house? Why do we need the blessing on our house? And when, when, when I first read that, that blessing on our house, I just thought about, like, the physical house. But let's go ahead and let's see what it says. The blessing causes wealth and riches to be in your house. Amen? The blessing causes wealth and riches to be in your house. Go to Psalms. 112 and 1. Amen? Psalms 112 and 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that what? That feareth the Lord. Amen? The word feareth means reverence, honor. Amen? Obey. Amen? The Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Amen? Number 2. It says, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Three, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Let's go back to three, and let's open that up just a little bit. It says, wealth, meaning having enough, meaning sufficiency, amen? And riches shall be in his house. Now listen, and now when I, when I first start looking at this, I'm thinking about just me and mine and no more. But it says here, for it means family and descendants of family. Because you go back, God blessed Abraham. 
Abraham. And when he blessed him, he didn't just bless Abraham, he blessed his descendants. So if you got your children in the house or your grandchildren in the house, take a second and go call them blessed. Take a second and lay your hands on their on the head and say, you are the blessing. You are the blessed one. You are blessed. Come on, somebody. You've got to understand it. So it doesn't mean just the house that me and Pastor Kim live in and, 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 and the house that uh, Elder Tanya and Amos live in. That blessing goes to your children. Come on, somebody. Come on. Your children's children. Amen? The blessing. And so, you know, some of y'all might be saying, well, it doesn't look like it right now, but don't you pay attention to what you see because the word of God is what? Truth. Amen? And, 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 and it doesn't move according to what we see or hear. If it's contrary, no, it stays the same, and it means exactly what it says. Amen? Hallelujah. So, well, remember this, having enough. And so I think a lot of people get off into, and, uh, and ain't nothing wrong with being rich. Come on, now, ain't nothing wrong with being rich. Ain't nothing wrong with being like, you know, good and wealthy. Ain't nothing wrong with that if your heart is good. Amen? There's nothing wrong with that, but we got to remember that we're not chasing after the blessing. We're not chasing after the wealth and leaving God behind. Or, listen, going into dead works, listen to this, dead works, meaning serving God because you want the blessing. Well, that's dead works. We ain't trying to do that. See, we love God, and we, we honor God, and we worship God, amen? And we've given our lives to Christ, amen? And we reverence him, amen? But just because we love him and we are now the heirs, amen, of the promise, it just comes. So we don't seek to get it, but we have to have knowledge what, what, of what is already available to us, amen? So can I say this? No more speaking lack. No more speaking I ain't got enough. No more of that, amen? Because why? The blessing is on you, amen? And wealth and riches is in your house, amen? That means you got enough every week. Did you hear what I said? Every week. You got enough every week. You got enough every month. Amen? Every bill is paid on time. Amen? And, and listen, and you moving. Listen to this family and friends. And you moving into debt freedom. Amen? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I remember uh, my grandmother, which was my father's mother, and um, she had very little education. And I remember when um, I, I lived um, downstairs from her as an adult because I was taking care of her. And I remember that sometimes, um, you know, because she had dementia, uh, that she would go way back into time where she worked in the, the master's house. So she, and I'm just giving you a little background on her, amen? She worked in the master's house. Um, and so she would talk some things and, so that's when I knew that she had experienced that kind of life, that kind of pressure, that kind of bondage, amen? But she lived in Cleveland, Ohio. She was a homeowner of a very beautiful home, and um, she did not have a job, but what she did was what she was raised as a little girl to do, and that was to earn uh, uh, people's clothes and do people's laundry, okay? But she was a homeowner, and she had all kinds of uh, jewels and furs, and, and when she came to our house, and you probably heard me say this before, the honor that we gave her because the blessing at that time, we didn't know, we just thought, you know, Mother Dear had it going on. But Mother Dear was a very prosperous black woman who came out of slavery. Amen? Come on, somebody. Y'all got to listen to me. But because she honored and she loved the Lord, and we would go over there sometimes, and me and Pastor Kimberly would spend the night, and Mother Dear would fall asleep in her favorite chair by the, by the uh, fireplace and fall asleep and, and would have the Bible in her lap. Or you would see it opened up in her room. We knew, we knew that she was a godly woman. She walked like a godly woman. She talked like a godly woman. Y'all got to get what I'm saying. But she was very uneducated. Come on now. But God's blessing was on her life that when she did people's clothes, amen, listen, when I would have to pick her up to go and take her, amen, to drop off the clothes, amen, the respect and 
and the honor that she received from the people that she uh, uh, she worked for. It was amazing. So what I'm saying is, she never missed a bill. <laughs> you hear me when I'm talking about wealth and riches in the house? Amen? She never missed a bill. She never had to worry about no finances. Amen? Because God had put a blessing on the works of her hands. It wasn't no intellect. It was no college. Come on, nobody. It, 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 it wasn't that, you know, money from um, descendants had passed down to her, but she worked every day down in her basement washing and ironing and starching people's clothes. Amen? But when you looked at my grandmother, when she walked out the house, she never was raggedy and she never was dirty. Her hair, every week, we took her every week to get her hair done at the beautician. And she would say, now don't forget, baby, I got to go to the beauty shop. I say, yes, mother dear. I make sure that we, we made sure that she got to the beauty shop. So this is what I'm talking about, blessing. And so I'm not trying to get you, I'm trying to get you to understand it's not about having all of this money. Yes, it might come and it probably will come. We're entitled to it, but that's not what we're hunting after, amen? We're, we're coming into the identity that we are what? The blessed ones, amen? That the blessing rests on our house, amen? Hallelujah. So if we could, please, go to Proverbs 22, amen? Hallelujah. Somebody say, riches and wealth go to work for me. Come on, somebody. Amen? Proverbs 22, it says, the blessing of the Lord, and make it rich, and he added no sorrow to it. Okay, let's, let's talk about that. We got a lot of wealthy, rich people in this world without God. And they have a lot of sorrow and a lot of toil to it. And I go back and I look at my grandmother and she didn't toil for anything. She went down there and she worked the Iron's Day's uh, work. Every day she went to work. She went down in the basement, she did laundry. She didn't leave the house, that's what she did. Amen? And there was no toil to her, to the, um, the blessing that was on her life, amen? Hallelujah. So it says, the blessing of the Lord, and make it rich and addeth no sorrow. Amen? Sorrow in the Hebrew, it means to toil. Amen? And you got people down there, you know, and, 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 and they're very rich. Amen? And all they got on their mind, and they're toiling, and they're toiling, and they toss and turn it at night, and every night they got to have a little whiskey drink because they got to settle down because all they're thinking about is how to make it, how to make it, when all we do, listen to this family, all we do is get up and we go to work. And we live above what our finances in the numerical order uh, says. We live above that without any toil, without any sorrow. Somebody say, the blessing is in my house. Amen? Hallelujah. So one of the things I want to talk about is that the, the blessing also destroys the enemy from entering into your house. Amen? Go to Exodus uh, 12 and 23. Go to Exodus 12 and 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, and on the side post, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into, to come in unto your houses to smite you. Amen? And so God had gave some, some instructions to the people of Israel who were believers. He told them, he said, now once you have had, he said, I want you to, to, to take some hiss off. He said, and I want you to dip it in the blood. And he said, and I want you to cover your doorpost. Meaning, he said, that some things is about to happen. Amen. But because of the blessing that is on your life, that blood, amen, will keep you covered. Amen. Somebody said, the blood of Jesus is over my door, doorpost. Amen. The, the, the things that are going, out, are going on in the world today, amen, you got to trust and believe that because the blessing, because of God's hand, his favor, his supernatural protection that is over you and your family and your household, amen, uh, go ahead on and, and when you get ready to leave out the front, front door, turn around and do your hand like this. Uh, 
plead the blood of Jesus over this house. Amen? Amen? Because there is a supernatural protection over our household. Even in the book of Malachi, and we go over this every week, it says in Malachi 3 and 10, it says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be no, be no more room, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Then go to 11. And it says, and I will rebuke. Amen? Why? Because of the blessing. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen? And for your sake, and he shall not destroy. Listen, why will he not be able to destroy? Because of the blessing. Amen? He said, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. He said, neither will your fruit, listen, fall from the tree and ain't even ripe for harvest. Amen? He said, because of the blessing. Now, we already know and then it starts out because we bring our tithe and we obey the Lord in that. But in, in, in bringing our tithe, amen, we, we walk into the blessing, amen? The blessing is activated, amen? So, and, and, and I love the fact that he says that, that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, amen? Come on, somebody, glory to God. Amen. Since I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Listen, that no, nothing that comes up against you, amen, will show, show ever prosper. Amen? amen? My goodness. So we're going to go on down. The blessing will cause your job, your church, your ministry, your business to look like the Garden of Eden. Amen? I go back and I think when I worked for the sheriff's office. That last four years I was there working in the juvenile unit. Amen? And um, I just go, I mean, God really, really, he really poured out on me there. Amen. I had such great favor. Amen. You know, I, out of all of the years I had been there, I had never received any kind of award. I mean, awards start coming to me. Amen. I was beginning to be recognized. And, and what it was is that, that the blessing, the blessing was beginning to bloom on my life. Amen. I never miss the raise. I never, listen, never miss the raise. Amen. Hallelujah. Because what the blessing, amen. Hallelujah. They used to call me the inmate whisperer, but they didn't know it was the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what the world had. That's all that they could say. But they didn't know that when I talked to people that it wasn't me talking, that it was the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they would say, you can always calm them down, but they didn't know that the blessing was on my life, number one, to cause the works of my hands to be prosperous. Number two, they didn't know it was the Holy Ghost. Amen? Come on, somebody. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about on your jobs, where people just kind of got you like, I don't know, you know, something different about you. And just as a matter of fact, Friday, on my job, they wrote up a paper about me because now I'm coming out of the office and I will be actually... Um, doing my security job where before they had me in the office doing some work. Now y'all know I, I was having a hard time with that, but they told me, they said that every day when they come in, they said it's something about you, they, they know who I am, it's something about you, but you light up the whole office and everybody that comes in, they just immediately start laughing and talking. Now see, they don't know it's the Holy Ghost, amen? But the blessing, amen? And they wrote up this nice paper and they all was in the circle six feet around, and they, they handed me this, they raised it to me, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, amen? Somebody say the blessing. Blessing. Amen? amen? Where people have favor and that preferential treatment, amen, where they recognize you because what the blessing is on your life. It ain't nothing that's magnificent that Rita is doing, but amen? But that blessing is on my life, amen? And that blessing, come on somebody, I say it with me. The blessing is on your life, amen? amen. Glory to God. Do me a favor and go to Isaiah 51 and 1. And we're going to read down to 3. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Isaiah 51 and 1. It says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Amen? That's us, y'all. <laughs> Ye that seek the Lord, that's us, y'all. Look unto the rocks which ye were hewn, 
and what that word means is cut, and to the hole of the pit which ye were digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and to Sarah that bare you. For I have called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. Zion is the church, y'all. And for the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will, com he will comfort all her waste places. Come on, listen to this, y'all. And he will make her wilderness, her desolate lifestyle. He says, I will make it like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Amen? Joy and gladness shall be found therein, and thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. Amen? He said, church, listen, whatever your desolate part is, he says, listen to this. He said, whatever the wilderness that's in your life, whatever that might be desolate, whatever might be deserted, he said, I'm about to turn it into the garden of the Lord. Amen? Like the garden of Eden. Amen? Where he told man, he said, go and be fruitful and multiply. Amen? Come on, somebody. Meaning where you don't have no life. Those areas. Amen? So you speak the blessing over your life in areas. Amen? That don't, listen, that don't meet up. Go ahead and speak the blessing of God over it. Amen? So we have been re recreated. Listen, y'all. Back into the very image of God. We are to live like God told Adam. God blessed Adam and told him, you are in my image and in my likeness. Now have dominion and rule with all authority in the earth and everything on you. Then he told him, he said, I want you, Adam, he said, I want you, listen to this, y'all, because this is for you. Be fruitful and very productive and abound in everything. God went on to tell Adam, and I'm speaking it over your life, come on, to multiply and increase abundantly. Somebody say, I increase abundantly. Don't look at your bank, don't look at your, your, your bank book, don't look, don't look at your, 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 your credit card statement, just go ahead and say, I live my life abundantly. I multiply and I increase in every area of my life. Amen? See, we got to go back and we got to keep this in mind that the curse was removed from our house so the blessing could come. Okay? The curse was removed. And anything that is in your life that look like it ain't, it ain't meeting up, it's time for us to start speaking to it. Amen? Start Amen? Start calling that area blessed. Amen? Listen. Go to Galatians, and we were there last week. Amen? Go to Galatians 3 and 13. And we're going to read 13 and 14. Then we're going to drop down to 29. And y'all know, I, I, y'all probably don't know, but I like Galatians. Mm-hmm. I love Galatians. It says Galatians 3, 13, 14 through 29. It says, Christ has redeemed us. I'm going to stop right there because I really want us to always get this. So if he redeemed us, that means he paid the price. That means that he, 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 he stood in our stead. Meaning that where we couldn't stand, he stood. And he took it. It says Christ has redeemed us, meaning he paid the price for our sins. A price that we could never pay. We could have never taken the punishment that he took. As a matter of fact, God didn't want us to take that punishment. Amen? Amen? So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, meaning the penalty. Amen? He became a curse for us. Amen? So, it is written, Curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing, y'all ready? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through who? Jesus Christ, who became what? A curse for us. Amen? Hallelujah. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And if ye, I'm dropping down to 29, and if ye belong to Christ. Can I say that? If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Listen, Jesus, 
Jesus did the great exchange. He took upon him the curse so that we can listen, have the blessing. So, amen, I want to let you know that you qualify. Now, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal, as a personal Savior, listen, baby, you qualify. Amen? We qualify to operate in the blessing that God first spoke. Come on, somebody. To Adam. Oh my God. We qualify to walk in that kind of blessed power. Amen. And authority. Come on, somebody. He says, he says here, and if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs. Now let me tell you what an heir is. One who receives his allotted permission by right of Sonship. Everybody that's up under the sound of my voice, you are a son of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, I want to drop down and go down to Genesis 13 and 2 and listen to this. And it says that Abraham was, what, very rich in cattle and in silver and in gold. Amen. Abraham was a wealthy man. We cannot deny that. Amen? I'm going to tell you this right now, and I ain't looking at my bank account. I am a very wealthy woman. I don't know if anybody is bold enough to say it, but I'm bold enough to say it. I'll take the ridicule and I'll take the persecution, but I am wealthy. How am I supposed to say I'm not wealthy and God has, has created me in his image? Amen? And that the blessing is on my life. Amen? But wealth. Amen? That means that every last one of my needs is taken care of and I lack for nothing and there is no insufficiency in my life. Amen? I don't know about you, but I'm wealthy. So if you, you're courageous enough, go ahead and type in and say I'm wealthy. Amen? I honor God. I love God. I belong to Christ. Amen? So that means that that blessing is on my life. Amen? The blessing of Abraham. So how do we get that blessing in our house? We got to make a, a, a quality and firm, uncompromising decision to put God's word, somebody say, first. See, you got to think about everything that God has made available to us. Amen. That God is looking for some people just to, to long after him and him alone first. Amen. He's looking for those who will seek after him first. Amen? They're not seeking after him for the goods. That's, you know, that's that kind of worldly stuff. We go with people because they got, they got money. You know how, I don't know if y'all ever did it. I did it. <laughs> I did it. Gave somebody because they had money. Yes, I did. And you know what that means. Amen? Hallelujah. Go to Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Listen to this, y'all. I want y'all to listen to this. This is very, very good. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set, meaning I have fixed before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, what? Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Did you hear what I'm saying? So when we make a choice in life between uh, life and death and blessing and cursing, it affects our whole generation. Did you hear what I just said? It affects our whole generation. So the decisions, let me stop right here and just touch this a little bit. The decisions that we make today, you got to think about your children's children's children. All right, all right, all right. I just wanted to say that. Make a decision to believe the word and listen. Put it in your mouth. Put the word of God in your mouth. Proverbs 18 and 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips, of his lips shall be filled. 20 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen? Hallelujah. So when we make those uh, uh, confessions over our lives, amen, and even uh, 
lot of times um, um, when I'm praying for somebody, I always speak over their life when I'm praying. And even when I'm ministering to you, I always make sure that, that I'm speaking um, blessings over your life and, and, and encouraging words over your life. Amen? Because I want to see the fruit of it. <laughs> I want to see the fruit of what I'm saying. Uh, 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 amen? Uh, uh, come up and, 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 and manifest in your life. Amen? And also manifest in my life. Amen? Hallelujah. And we really do have to train our tongue to speak blessings. And it doesn't matter what we're talking about. Amen? But make sure that we are always speaking blessings. Let's go to J James 3, 7 and 10. Because see, we're talking about, amen, getting the blessing in our house and in the generation. How do we get it? Amen? And we do have to watch what we say. And you know what? I always talk about that. Because our worst enemy, can I tell y'all this? It ain't a lot of times, all the time, what we're thinking is really what we're saying. See, because a thought will go, uh, uh, will, will become um, um, uh, aborted if we don't give life to it through our mouths. Amen? You can think something and you can cast that imagination down. It's dead. But once we think something and we speak it, it comes to life. Amen? Amen? Come on, somebody. So James 3 and 7, and we're going to read it down to 10, says all kind of animals, birds, and reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but, but no human can be, can, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison, but the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings. We have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praising and cursing. My brothers, my sisters, this should not be. Amen? So don't allow corrupt words to come out of your mouth. Amen? Don't allow them to come out. Amen? Because, yeah, you know what? Before we think things, we do say it. And I'm going to tell you, you know, have you ever heard somebody say, I didn't mean to say that, and I say it in my head. Yes, they did, because they thought it first. They just didn't really intend for it to come out of their mouth, but it came out, amen? And then they said, oh, I didn't mean that you just go, mm -hmm. <laughs> amen? So, amen, but we all, we're all going to say only what Jesus says about us, amen? We're only going to say what Jesus says about people, amen? In Galatians 3, 27, and 28, it says, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Somebody say, I'm clothed with Christ. Amen? He said, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there any male or female, for you all are one in Christ. Amen? And I'm just I, I speaking and declaring over your life right now that you are one in Christ. Amen? That when people see you, coming, amen, they see Christ, amen, they see Christ when they hear you speak, they see Christ in the way you walk, in the way you love, and the compassion on your life, I speak it and declare it over your life in the name of Jesus, let's go over to 1 John 3 and 1, amen, amen, I'll give you a second to get there, alright, 1 John 3 and 1 says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, come on y'all, he says that he has lavished some great love on us, that we should be called what? The children of God. I don't care what the enemy brings up against your mind, amen? And when you, when you don't make the mark one day and you done messed up and did something you shouldn't have did one day, amen? No, amen? But you got to remember, no matter what, amen, you were brought, you were purchased with a price by the blood of Jesus, amen? And you are a child of the Most High God, amen? You are a friend of God, amen? You no longer a servant, you are a friend of God, amen? And you are blessed by God, amen? So let me finish reading, and it says, and that is what we are. Come on, somebody. The reason the world does not know us is that they didn't know him. That's the reason why they don't really know us. They'll call us um, happy. They'll call us um, um, sweet and, and, and compassionate and all of that, but that's all they know. 
That's all they know. But they don't really know us, that we are children of the Most High God. They just know that we're not like the world. And a lot of us can't, a lot of people can't describe us that are in the world, that we're godly people. They just know it's something different about you. You don't act like everybody else. Amen? Let's go to First uh, Peter 2 and 9. Here's my favorite. And then we're going um, to close it out right here. First Peter 2 and 9. Here it is, y'all. First Peter 2 and 9. And this is what we got to speak over our lives. But ye are a chosen generation. Amen? We are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. Amen? That we should show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand praise. Come on. Hallelujah. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. Because when God chose you, amen, that blood that has run down Jesus, that run off of that uh, uh, cross onto your life is running off of your life and running down to your children's life. We have to speak and declare that in the name of Jesus, amen? So we are a chosen generation. We are royal. That royal means kingly. Come on, somebody. That we, we participate in that, in that, 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 that authority that a king has. And what I want to say about that, that royalty, that kingliness, is that when we declare a thing, it shall be established. It was only the kings back in the day in the biblical times that would say something in the Old Testament, and it had to be. Amen? Hallelujah. So you are you are of royalty. Amen? You are a priest. You are holy. Amen? And you are a peculiar people. Amen? So God bless you all. I want to thank you all for coming on. And one of the things I want to minister um, on today, I want to go ahead with the uh, altar call. And um, some of you who are going to listen to this video, or you might be listening to me minister, and you, you're saying, um, you know, how do I get this curse off of my life? Amen? That's a good one. But it's an easy one. Amen? We must get saved. We must receive Jesus Christ and everything that he done for us on the cross. That day that the great exchange happened. That he took upon himself all of the sin and all of the iniquity. Amen. All of our sickness and disease and our grief and our sorrow. And he took our punishment. Amen. And you go ahead and this might be a time for you. Amen. But I don't want you to receive Jesus for the blessing. I want you to receive him for new life. Because, yeah, you've probably been struggling. And you stumbled across this video. God been speaking to you anyway. And he's been drawing you anyway. And you didn't know exactly what was going on. I'm going to tell you right now exactly what was going on. Today is the day of your salvation. Amen? Amen. Today is the day of your salvation. Today, the great exchange comes to your house. Amen? That you come out of bondage and walk into freedom. Amen? Hallelujah. First, uh, 2 Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. And that's you that is listening to me. Today is the day of your salvation. Amen? But that all should come to repentance. So now we have to take that step. And that step is in believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that he died on the cross for all of your sin. No matter how big and no matter how small. But he died on the cross mm -hmm. for all of your sin. Amen? And he rose up out of that grave on the third day so that you also will defeat death. Amen? You say, why not defeat? Oh, yeah. I'm going to defeat death. Yeah, the body might die. Jesus is eternal. Amen? With Christ.
Christ Jesus in heavenly places. So if that's you and you, you would like to give your life to Christ, amen, I would love to usher you into the kingdom of God. I would love to. It is an honor. It is a privilege. And so I'm going to pray for you right now. And then I'm going to uh, say the prayer to usher you into the kingdom. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are listening to me, let us come forth, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, they have been drawn by your spirit, Lord God. I thank you for your mercy, and I thank you, Lord God, for your grace that is, that is on their life and your love for them, Lord God. I thank you, the Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that today is the day that they are recreated, that they are born again. So, Father, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would just go ahead and pray with me right now. Amen. And let's 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 get that curse off your life. Amen. Let's let's get new life. Amen. And most of all, a renewed heart. Amen. A renewed heart. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, come on and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. And I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I do believe that he died on the cross. And he rose again on the third day from the grave. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart that I may be born again, that all things will pass away, and behold, all things will become new. I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody put your hands together for the new believer. Amen. Put your hands together for that new believer. Amen. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. We thank you. Amen. Because this part of the service is the most important part of the service. Amen. So we just praise and thank God for you. Amen. If you need any information, what we need you to do is we need you to uh, inbox us by messenger. Uh, 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 messenger us. Uh, Pastor Kimberly or myself, Pastor Rita, amen? So that would be Rita Perry. You would message me, Rita Perry, amen? And if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, i got more information for you. Um, I can send you books. I can get you whatever you need. We can get you plugged in, amen? And International Christian Fellowship, Pastor Kimberly and myself would love, amen, to serve you in the things of God, amen? Hallelujah. So, if we have anybody that is out there that is sick in your body, amen, I would like to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and Father, I praise you. I speak to that part of the body right now that is causing ailment. And I speak and I decree right now, Satan, get your hands up off of their body right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak and declare that the doctor's report will come back negative in the name of Jesus. I call you healed in Jesus' name. So we bind you, Satan, now. And we total, I totally disarm you now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I speak and declare divine healing from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody give God a hand praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know who that was for, but that one dropped down on me real quick. Amen. It dropped down on me really, really quick. So, amen. I decree and declare. So, if that is you, do not begin to speak sickness and disease no more. Go ahead and go to the doctor because that report will be negative. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So guess what time it is? Oh, shoot. It is now time for tithes and offering. Amen. 
So I'm going to come out of Luke 6 and 38. Amen. Did you know that God called us? Listen to me, because this is important. God called us so that he could bless us, so that we could be a blessing. Amen. Did you know that? And I'm going to tell you this. Uh, ever since I have been uh, uh, in relationship with the Father, he has taught me how, listen to this, to be a blessing. And, he, and I always say, Lord, if you can get it to me, you can get it through me. Amen? And so, remember this. And I want y'all to say this. I'm called and I am a blessing to be a blessing. See, you know, all of what God does for us, it ain't just for us. It's always for somebody else. And somebody else that might be having lack or something going on in their finances or they just might need a helping hand somewhere, amen. But we are a blessing to bless somebody else, amen. So Luke 6 and 38 says, it says, give and it will be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Amen? Hallelujah. So while you're getting your offerings together, amen, I know Pastor Kimberly has already put up the cash out, amen? So y'all ready to go back to Malachi? Let me get it on here. Let me get it up here. Amen? I liked it up here. And I should probably start putting that up here. Malachi says, bring these all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen? And he says that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen? Meaning everything that's going on out there in the world, you, you can just count it as out there because it shall not come nigh unto you. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Meaning he's not going to let nothing happen to your finances. Amen? So... I just want to praise and thank God for you, amen, while you're getting your, uh, your offering and your times ready, amen, and you're sending them in right now. And I want to speak over your life right now in the name of Jesus that you, will, you, are, a, you are blessed to be a blessing and that your generation is blessed, meaning that your children's children is blessed. That they are taught of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that everything that you go to lay your hands to do. Amen. No matter what it is. If you work in an honest job. That no matter what you put your hands to. That it's. Listen. Oh my God. That it shall prosper in all that God has caused it to do. Amen. So Father I thank you and Father I praise you. I thank you for those who trust you and they have faith in you, Lord God, when it comes to their tithe and when it comes to their offering, Lord God. I thank you that, Lord God, that nothing is lacking in their life and nothing is missing. But, Lord God, that they're living in abundance and they're sufficient in all that they need, Lord God. And, I, Father, I thank you for increase over their finances in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So that they can continue to be a great blessing in the kingdom of God and also in the world, Lord God. So, Father, I thank you. I offer up their offering unto you, our high priest, Christ Jesus. And we offer it up to you with praise, with thanks, and all of adoration that we can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Well, family, it is about that time. We will be I, I we will be having our Zoom meeting on Monday, amen, at seven. Amen. Invite somebody. Amen. Um, we will also come on, y'all. Y'all ready? 
Bible study. Oh my God. Pastor Kimberly allowed the Lord to use her this Wednesday. Listen, and tore the house up. Amen. So listen, come on, somebody. We would love to see you in Bible study. Amen. Um, thank you for your faithfulness. Those of you who are faithful and Sunday. And, 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 and coming in on Sunday, every Sunday. And coming in Wednesday on every Wednesday. Amen. I speak a special blessing over your life because of your faithfulness to God first. And second, to your faithfulness to whom God has placed over your life to watch over your life spiritually. Amen. I speak a special blessing. And I'm going to tell you this right now. That special blessing I'm talking about, and I remember Pastor Kimberly, are you, your face up too? No. No, her face ain't up. But I remember when we were uh, uh, faithful to Bishop uh, Bishop and First Lady uh, 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 Steele. We were faithful, and we did not know. If we got sick or we were, something was going on, yeah, we missed. But we were very, very faithful. When we came to Azusa World Ministries, which is right now, I am... Church to the Nations, and we're up under Apostle Alpha Craig Sr., our faithfulness opened up doors of increase. It opened up doors for favor. Amen? God loves those that are faithful in what they do. So for those of you who are faithful, I decree and declare the blessings in abundance over your household. Amen? So we just want to praise and thank God for you all. Amen? And we're going to go ahead. Pastor Kimberly, you want to put your face up? Yes, sir. I want her face is up, amen. <laughs> She's gorgeous. Amen. So, Pastor Kimberly, God bless you also, amen. And um, thank, you. thank you for everything that you do, amen. Thank you for everything that you do as well. Amen. amen. Pastor Kimberly <laughs> is, is amazing. She is amazing. And I really do thank God for you, amen. Oh, thank you. And, um, and she, and my, you, y'all know my sister. Oh, look at him. Oh, I love you so much. Amen. Um, Elder Tanya, now I know you watching, but girl, you know you super gorgeous. Amen. Look, look, uh, Elder Tanya, she fly, ain't she? <laughs> she fly. She look. need to give us some of them fly glasses. <laughs> she need to give us some fly glasses. So we just throwing some love out there, you know, some family love. Amen. And so, you know what? Um. All three of us have been raised up uh, as women of God and, and to go forward in the things amen. of ministry. Amen. So we just praise and thank God. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do the benediction, amen, so we can get Oh, we got one more announcement. We have one more announcement. Um, that will be um, next Sunday. We will be having um, communion and yes. our elder um, Jarvis will be ministering <laughs> communion. So y'all give her a hand clap. Amen. amen. We ready for amen. communion. Amen. It's amen. Right. It's been a little bit, but it hasn't. And we want to thank God yes. for our elder Jarvis um, yeah. for her faithfulness yes. and all she Amen. does yes. uh, for the ministry as Glory well. Glory to God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And she does do a, she does a wonderful job yes, she does. when she ministers. Amen. Amen. So, you know, we try to encourage her and everything to, to take another step forward. We ain't going to get into details, but you know what? <laughs> That's what our job is as Absolutely. pastors. Absolutely. And then is to to see in the spirit what God has on somebody's life mm -hmm. and to encourage them to move forward. Absolutely. Amen? Absolutely. And just to encourage them to move forward. I don't believe that God sent lay people to us in this season. I believe that everybody that has that is faithful to this ministry, amen, and, and, and that is uh, partners in this ministry, you guys are the front line. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to say it again. I don't care. You guys are the front line. Amen? So, amen? So, hoo hoo. Let's go front line. Amen. amen. So, we're going to go ahead and go. Father, we thank you and Father, we praise you, Lord God. We thank you that your word came with clarity and understanding, the Lord, that it fell on good ground, Lord God, and that your people will walk out the blessing that you have bestowed on their house all the days of their life. And Lord, they will seek ye first the kingdom of God, amen, first. And all those other things will be added unto them. So Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. 
and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Family, we love you. Yes. And we're going to say have a wonderful, wonderful week. Absolutely. Bye. We'll see you on Monday. We'll see you on Monday. All right. Be blessed. Be blessed.